What is going on, gang? Welcome back to Ranwen Parked. I'm happy to have you guys here today. And in this episode, we are back to working on the Land Cruiser. We had a quick break last week. We worked on the Honey Badger a little bit, which we're going to need. But I'm back to trying to finish up the Land Cruiser. And today, it's going to be wiring and a couple odds and ends. Um, we're going to start with one of those, uh, you know, housekeeping items that isn't wiring. We'll take care of that in a second. But then it's going to be wiring, wiring, and more wiring. We're going to try to finish this thing up today. Uh, and to start with, we are going to make power cables. So let me show you how you do that. Okay, so to start with, most people hate wiring. I love wiring. I think I mentioned that before, and I don't know what it is about it. Maybe the fact that it's clean. You can usually do it in comfortable areas unless you're like on your back under the dashboard trying to wire. And it's super satisfying when it goes smoothly and when it's done right. I like to solder the wires. I like to shrink wrap the wires. I like to loom the wires. I like to route them so they're nice and clean. I don't know what it is about it, but I like it. So to start off, we are gonna make our positive and negative battery terminals. We are going to wire up the key and then we're gonna make sure the whole computer system and ECU EFI system is all sorted out and it runs off the key. So to start with, positive and negative battery terminals. Here's how you do it. So, I got some uh, single lock cable here, one O gauge, and this is reason one million why you always keep uh, heavy gauge wires out of all your projects. This is uh, leftover from, I think, wiring up the Ford, maybe my RX-7, I'm not really sure. But it is good uh, American-made 1.0 wire. And for those in the know, this stuff is very expensive by the foot. So that's a pretty expensive chunk of wire. This is a factory negative wire out of a Silverado. I think I mentioned in a video recently that was just like LS swap basics that I covered. Um, people basically give away wiring harnesses with LS engines when you buy them. So I have like three wiring harnesses out back, and this was in one of the boxes. So another big savings there. It's got a ring terminal on one end. I just need to put a ring terminal on the other end. And then you can buy battery terminals. I like the stud type with the wing nut. You can get them at your local auto parts store. I go, always go to Napa. They also have in stock these crimp or solder on ring terminals. Um, they're really not supposed to be soldered on, but we're going to solder them on today. I've done that in the past. It works perfect. You know, don't complain at me. It works. So we're going to go ahead and make these things. We're going to put them on the truck and then we are going to wire up the key switch and we're just going to make sure all the engine stuff is good through the bulkhead in the firewall and the positive and negative bulkheads in the firewall, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go to uh, time lapse and make some battery cables. All 
Alright guys, so positive cable is done, negative cable is done. It grounds out right to the mount under there, that uh, the mount for the battery box itself. So, now that we have power, next objective is to move on with wiring this thing. Like I stated before, what I'd really like to start with is getting it running again off of an ignition switch and a key. So, here's what we're starting with. We have a factory style ignition switch and key. We have a factory style headlight switch. And then, uh, just as a future reference, I'm going to be converting the whole thing over to Deutsch connectors, <clears throat> just like I used on the firewall. So these are DT series connectors. I have, I believe, two, or one four-pin connector to replace the headlight switch connector, so it'll be a Deutsch connector. And then I have two six-pin connectors for the taillights, which I have sitting in the truck itself right now. And we will get to that, but what we're going to start with is the ignition switch. So... This thing had an existing hole in the dash to the left of the gauge cluster, which I'm going to keep. I am going to have to enlarge that. But first, we have all of our wires already labeled right here. So all we really have to do is put some uh, ring terminal connectors on here, mount that thing in the dash, and we should just be able to fire this thing up off a key for the first time. So let's go ahead and do some wiring and get that all wired up correctly and out of the way. And then we'll fire it up and uh, make sure all that stuff's done correctly before we move on to the body wire. Okay, so we have our ignition switch installed now. Everything is hooked up to it. So now if I hook this positive terminal back up, which I obviously had off while I was wiring, let's put it on real quick. All right. Now we should just start this thing right up, honestly. Let's see. All right, it's on. That's a good start. Okay, and off. Perfect, time to wire up the rest of this thing. All right guys, so we have some wiring stuff here. I think I mentioned before to you guys that I was gonna switch everything over to Delphi connectors. So we have all our DT series connectors here. And I understand that sometimes doing this stuff can be a little bit overwhelming because you have to buy it all in pieces, the professional stuff at least. But, um, it's really not that bad. So I used to be nervous about this and I used to buy like, you know, Chinese connectors with pigtails already in them on Amazon or whatever because I didn't know how to do this. But I recently realized on Wirecare, wirecare.com, they sell kits. So they get you all the barrel and terminal connectors, they get you the, the separators, and they get you both connector sides all together so you don't have to worry about it. 
Um, so that's what I did here. So the first thing we're going to do, which is a good opportunity to show you guys how this all works, is we are going to switch this factory Toyota headlight switch away from the Toyota harness style connector, and we are going to put a four pin Deutsch DT connector on it so I can mount that in the dash and hook it up to the harness. And then we're also going to take these factory headlight or tail lights, that is to say, and we are going to put these Deutsch six pin connectors on them. That way I can install that stuff, but I wanna put the pins on this stuff and get it all set right now. And then what we'll do after that is we will start laying out our Speedway Motors harness, which we've talked about before, all of this stuff. I already mounted, not on video, the fuse box holder, which is right there. It'll sit right next to our engine fuse box and relays. Um, and then we can start pinning that all into our bulkhead, which is right here, and get all those wires through. We'll run them under the truck. We'll run all the wires everywhere. And hopefully we get to the point where we do headlights and taillights today, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll see how far we get. Let's get moving. Okay, guys. So first things first, we need to figure out what pin is which on this because this is Toyota and now we're going to put a Deutsch connector on it and then it's going to get hooked up to a painless harness. So we need to understand what all these things do. And the way to do that is just by ringing them out with an ohm meter. So... You'll know when the gauge goes up that you have continuity between these things, right? So we hook up to one, we hook up to any other. The switch is off right now, so we shouldn't have any continuity between anything, and we don't. Now, we go on to what would be parking lights, one click out, and then we now have continuity. You see the gauge? So we know on parking lights, green with a red stripe and green are the two that'll work. And that's a good guess. Green with a red stripe is probably the power for the parking lights, and red with a white stripe is probably power for the headlights, and white with a black stripe is out to the headlights, I would guess. So now, if that's the case, we click on to the headlights, two clicks out on the switch. We should have continuity across those two, which we do. And really, now if we hook it up to both of them, we should have continuity at both of these, which we have continuity at that one, and we have continuity at that one. So what we just showed is if you power both of these, the reds, if you will, the greens are the parking lights on the parking light setting, whites are the headlights on the headlight setting, and the parking lights are also on in the headlight setting, which is what you'd expect. Now, since I have a tail light here, let me just show you that in a more detailed format. So what I've done here is I've just hooked up a power to the positive side of my battery. I am going to hook that to both the green with a red stripe and the white with a red stripe. And now I have hooked the ground from my tail light up to the ground of the battery. Now all I have to do is, we'll put this on parking lights and we'll use, let's say the, rev the well actually we'll use the parking light itself as the parking light. So that goes on, on parking lights. Now we'll just leave that on. We will take the reverse light and we'll make it our headlight Let's just connect those together. Now let's go to headlights. And now not only would the headlight have come on, but the parking light stays on, which is exactly what you want. So you have no lights, parking lights, parking lights and headlights. So now that we know what this switch does, all we have to do is pin this thing into a new connector in a format that we like. We can mount it in the dash and then we can start running wires to the thing. So let's move on to pinning this thing. Alright guys, so we got our DT connectors installed. Everything is nice. I even loomed the taillight harnesses. Those are going to be beautiful. We got it installed on our headlight switch and these are our three 
female sides that go into the harness later. We have all our terminal pins right there and everything. Now let's move on to phase two. Okay, so it's time to put our main fuse box in and start running wires through the bulkhead up there, which you can barely see. Now remember I mentioned a while ago that I actually really like doing wiring? Well, I do, and it is fun, but there's not much that seems fun about this, just because it's cramped under there, and this is going to be a lot of wires and a lot of pins and a lot of going through the bulkhead. So I guess we just bite the bullet and get going. So let's... Put the harness in and see what happens. So to start with, these wiring harnesses come with great directions. And on the front page of those directions, it tells you where everything goes. So you got your instrument and dash harness, which is going to be this stuff. You have your rear of the vehicle, which is this stuff right there. You have your fuse panel and front of the, the vehicle, which is this stuff. And then you have instruments and dash, which is this stuff. So... The rear of the vehicle stuff and the fuse panel in front of the vehicle stuff, you need to go through every item, and those are what's going to run into the bulkhead connector. This stuff is going to stay under the dashboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the fuse box into the connector on the firewall, and then we're going to start going through these things, and we're going to start pinning them all into the connector, cutting the wires short, and then pinning into the back side so we can run them to the place on the vehicle they are. Once we get our leads out to the tail lights and to the parking switch and to the reverse light switch and the headlights and the side lights and all that stuff, then we will start wiring those things in and see what works and what doesn't. But to start with, let's get this thing under the dash, get the wires cut short, and get our bulkhead connector all pinned up. All right, we've got our fuse box installed up in there, as you can see right there. And now we have a real rat's nest on our hands. And the way I'm going to manage this is <clears throat> I'm going to take each bundle and I'm going to clip all the zip ties on them and let them go one at a time so we can go through all our wires. So I started with the rear of the vehicle here. Obviously, it's a ton of wiring. It has to go all the way to the back. And this is why it's really important to go through all these before you go to your bulkhead because what we have here is a green wire which says right rear turn right there. We need that. Our yellow wire is left park. Oh, no, left rear turn. I'm sorry. We need that. Our brown wire is left tail light parking light. So there is all the rear lights right there other than backup lights. Then we have third brake, which we do not need. And we also have fuel gauge which we do not need in the back because normally that would be under the back. So that's how this harness is built. But on the FJ40, it's inside right there. That's for the sending unit. So five wires just turned into three that actually go to the bulkhead. One's going to get eliminated and one's staying in the interior. So it is important that you go through every wire so you can limit what actually goes to the bulkhead because you're limited on pins and you do have to be careful with this stuff. And honestly, you just don't want to run wires that you don't need. So I'm going to go through every wire here. I'm going to clip them all down short and then we'll start pinning them in. Okay, so we have three of our four wires right there through the boot into the bulkhead connector. And just an FYI, guys, I'm being very, very careful doing one at a time, but the numbers are actually printed inside. Very, very small. You definitely can't see them on the camera, but they are there. And then on the other side, the corresponding number is on the outside there. Maybe you guys can kind of see those. Maybe if you can't even read them. But these ones going to the rear of the vehicle are also pinned in through the boot. And they're just sitting over the front right now because I will obviously go down and backward with them. However, my brake light one I did leave out. And that is because I don't want these wires all bound up under here. I want them all the same length. So before I put that one through and, and plug it into the bulkhead, I'm going to get a wire out of here that is going to the front of the vehicle or anywhere outside of the tub. And I'm going to cut it to the right length. And then I'll wrap up the rear of the vehicle and I'll match everything to that length. Now... This is gonna get a little bit monotonous, <clears throat> and I think now that you've seen me pin a couple of these things, you could do an infinite amount as long as you're careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all these pins into the bulkhead connector, and I'll see you in one second. Okay, gang, so it wasn't quite one second. It took me a little bit longer than that, but I have all my uh, harness items that are going to the front of the vehicle right here. Those are gonna go into the bulkhead connector, and then I have all the corresponding flying leads on the other end with the female end of this thing. Those are gonna go into the bulkhead connector. But before I do, I wanted to point out some of the things that we're not going to use. So these harnesses are very generic. So I guess the question becomes, how do you know what you're going to use and what you're going to, not going to use? And that's going to vary from project to project. But let me get these out of the way real quick. 
Let's go through some of the things that I'm not going to use that were available in this harness. So this pink wire is coil positive. This thing is EFI. You don't use a, you know, a single coil, obviously. It's coil unplug. Uh, choke power. Obviously, it doesn't have a choke. Uh, what is this? Alternator power. Alternator is already wired, wired up, but I do need an exciter, which I did pull out of this. Uh, fans. You could use this, and this actually does have a fan relay. One of those two relays up in there is a fan relay. However, because it's an LS, um, I actually pulled out over here the fan turn-ons. There's one of them right there. Fan one ground from the ECU. So I have an option. I can either just pull power right from the, the positive in here, and I can mount like a solenoid right here and then trigger it with a ground off that thing, or I could use another, another terminal in the bulkhead. I don't have infinite terminals, so I might as well just keep it in the engine bay. So I will not be using that. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, tachometer. We will not be using that because, you guys may or may not remember this, I actually pulled the tack signal. Which one is it? Right there. The tack output through the bulkhead connector right when we started this project. Uh, power antenna. This thing doesn't have an antenna, and if it did, it would probably be the one that sticks to the windshield like I have in the Honey Badger and not be outside. So, uh, Ignition switch start. Normally you would use this, but obviously, as you guys saw earlier in the video, we already wired all this up, and I just ran my own, and that's fine. And then... Solenoid power. So this is what's going to power most of this harness. Um, and since we ran these bulkheads back in here, which you may or may not be able to see from this angle, there they are, the red one right in the back there. I can just put a ring terminal on this thing, put it on that bulkhead connector, and then this whole harness will be powered up. So these ones um, are essentially null and void. I'm not going to be using any of them. Um, and we will deal with getting them out of the harness and out of the way as much as possible. But for now, Let's deal with the ones we are using, which are obviously right front signal, um, horn, left front signal, oil sender, low beams, left high beam, uh, left front park, temp sender, and I know this one is alt exciter because I saw that color. Now, I just want to cover two things with you guys. One, definitely when you're doing this, start getting wires out of your way as fast as possible because otherwise you will wind up with a rat's nest. So before I started these, I actually ran my tail light or you know, rear of the vehicle wires all the way through the frame rail and right out the left tail light. I can jump over to the right tail light whenever. I just wanted to get them out of the way. And then these ones I immediately put up towards the front of the vehicle so I can deal with that. Because if you have all this stuff just, you know, hanging out in the, the foot area, you're, you're just going to have a mess on your hands. And the other thing is, don't get nervous if you're running one of these Speedway harnesses or a painless harness or anything, and all you see is like left high beam or left park. And that is because all of those split further down the line. So you'll have your left low beam right there, and then the other side will be the right low beam. So only one of them actually goes to the fuse box and then they just, you know, split off later. So what I'm going to do is pin all these in and then we'll move on to the next items. So we're all pinned in. Uh, we got a few spots left. What? Three, six, seven, eight left. And what I'll do with those if I have any left is I'll probably just pin them with wires and run them through and just coil them up so I don't have to take everything apart and do it later. I just, you know, put the pins in both ends, make sure the wire colors match and you're off to the races. Obviously, we have the same thing going on this side. Um, now, before you move on, before you put the boots on, before you test anything, I cannot possibly advise enough that you stop what you're doing and record what pin is what wire. Because when you're diagnosing this thing later, if you have any problems, you're going to wish you did. So I'm going to stop right now. I got my computer open. I'm going to start writing them all down before I put the boots on and I can't see it anymore. So break out your laptop or a notepad. I don't care how you do it. You can chisel it into granite for all I care. But I strongly suggest that you write up your wiring diagram right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back, and then we're going to move on. All right, team. So I got this a little bit better organized, we'll say, although it might not look like it. So here is what was left out of that front harness. So this pink wire is coil positive. Now, I'm not going to eliminate that because that has a fuse on it. So I'm just going to leave that behind the dash because that is just a fusible link, almost like an accessory that I can use later. 
fan, same deal. That is a relayed link. I can use that later for accessories or, you know, whatever I want. Uh, choke power, same deal. That has a fuse on it. And alternator power, same deal. All of these have fuses in the box. So I'm just going to coil these up, um, you know, protect them really well behind the dash, and then just pull the fuses. And then later, I can just put that fuse back in, take this wire, and do whatever I want with it to run an accessory or whatever. This, on the other hand, is the main power for the solenoids. So this one we're going to cut short, put a ring terminal on, and hook up to the bulkhead in the back. Now, all this stuff we are going to deal with later. That is all, you know, radio and gauges and fuel sending unit and that stuff. Down here is going to be everything that goes to our column, or would go to the column, except for this, which is the high low beam actuator. This just plugs into a switch, which will screw to the floor. That's going to be really, really simple, except I'm just now seeing it's probably not going to reach the floor, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, everything else here, this little bundle goes all up to the column. So that is uh, third brake light, left rear turn, right rear turn, all the turn signals, hazards, horn. That stuff's all going to go up to the column. This stuff we are going to eliminate the plugs off of because this is the ignition switch. And just another reminder, we wired up our ignition individually earlier in this video. So I'm going to steal a couple things off this, the accessory power, for example, to run the radio and stuff, and also the main ignition switch power, which will switch on this whole system, which I need, um, just to make sure that the lights and things only work when the key is on. I will eliminate the connectors, and then any other wires in here, like the power, which I do not need in this situation, I will eliminate at the source. And these are just our flasher relays, which I'll just have to store under there, and the terminal sides of these, uh, hazard line, and I think the other one is just the flasher line. Yes, flasher. Those are both going to go to the steering column, which this steering column is set up with a GM plug. I am going to have to de-pin that and put on a different plug, which this harness comes with. So we're getting there, guys. Um, we just have to hook up a few more things here, ignition, accessory, main power, and then what I'll probably do is throw the taillights in and wire those up. And at least I can show you guys how that stuff works and that it works. We're missing a couple things to run everything. Uh, the headlights are probably going to be in a future video, but let's uh, get the rest of this stuff hooked up. Out of my aftermarket column is a factory GM column plug from like the 70s and 80s or something like that. These are really common and the connectors that this harness comes with, not the same. Now, I remember when I put this exact same column in the Honey Badger and a similar harness, that's a 21 circuit, this is like a 12 circuit, but Speedway Motors harness. I struggled with this for quite a while trying to figure out how the heck you convert the harness and like the connectors and how that all works. And I would love nothing more than to convince you guys that because I did that four years ago or whenever I did it, five years ago maybe, I know exactly what I'm doing right now. But unfortunately, I've forgotten all about it. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing with this and I'm going to have to take a minute and go and pin out the harness and the honey badger and figure out what the heck is going on there. And now I will be right back and act like I know what I'm doing. Okay yeah, guys, so now that I know exactly what I'm doing again, Ladies and gentlemen, so taillights are in and wired. The uh, passenger side went exactly the same as the driver's side, obviously, which is why I didn't show you. This is the um, license plate light wire. Don't worry about that little guy. It's just hanging out. So 
The next thing we're going to do is install the tail light switch, or that is to say the light and headlight switch, in the dash here. But before we do that, we need to install our fancy little reproduction worn locking hub sticker, which for those of you that are not FJ40 aficionados, goes like right there in the middle of the dash. You basically can't build an FJ40 without it. It's kind of an original feature, have to put it in. So I'm gonna throw that in, I'm gonna drill the hole, I'm gonna mount the headlight switch, and then uh, we're gonna wire this thing up and I'll show you how the lights work, and that'll be about the end of that. So let's get moving. Alright guys, so we got our switch in and as you can see, it's basically like a flush mount, which is kind of cool. And the reason for that is A, the fiberglass is way thicker than the factory sheet metal dash and B, for those of you that watched the video on all my body work on this, I put an aluminum panel behind this to support everything and also because there was a bunch of holes in here that I, I filled and uh, that is why this nut has to be countersunk in there. But once I countersunk it, it's kind of cool because it's essentially a flush mount. So. I've pretty much walked you guys through like everything you need to figure out a wiring harness like this, but there's two more things that I want to handle, and that is the neutral safety switch and reverse lights. So let's tackle that really quick, and then we'll call this thing done. Okay guys, so for one reason or another, these harnesses do not have a provision for reverse lights. I don't know why, but I seem to remember that was the case on the Honey Badger 2 when I put one of these in, but that's okay because it's easy enough to do other than the fact that I now have to run a wire all the way to the back of this thing. Now, reverse lights on this, because it's an automatic, are handled with a micro switch. The one on this side is the uh, neutral safety switch, a really park safety switch. You can't start the car unless it's in park, which we're gonna wire up in a second. And the one on the other side is the reverse switch. And you can see here, they are run by cams. So right now in park, this switch is engaged, meaning you could start the car. You take it out of park, this one is not engaged, meaning you could not start the car. This one is engaged, meaning the reverse lights are on. You come back into like neutral or drive or anything past that, and neither one of them is engaged, meaning you can't start the car and the reverse lights are not on. So we are gonna wire that stuff up. And because in order to take the body off, you would have to take the cover off the shifter and take this uh, cable off, I am going to just run the wires through the hole in the floor and not use the bulkhead. I wanted most everything to go through the bulkhead, but in this situation, I don't mind because uh, A, it would take way more wire, and B, like I said, you have to remove that cable anyway, so there would be no taking the body off without addressing that. So, let's get some wire, pick through a couple of circuits and find one that'll work for this, and let's wrap this job up. Okay, guys, so this is gonna be relatively simple. I have pulled the ignition switch back out again here, and the purple wire here is going to be our uh, start switch, essentially triggers the solenoid on the starter. And just for the record, in the LS harness, it is always the purple wire. So what we're going to do is cut that purple wire. We are going to run one end of it to this switch and then back out of that switch back to the other end. That harness will stay interior, so everything is on the interior. And then remember, I pulled these four wires out of here because these are things we are not going to use. This was, I believe, coil, alternator power, 
uh, choke power and fan. And we're not going to use them because the alternator power, I, I wired all that up with an alternator harness. The choke power, because obviously it's EFI, it doesn't have a, a choke. Uh, coil power, obviously, again, it's EFI, doesn't have, you know, a traditional coil. It has individual coils. And then fan power, only because we're going to wire up the fans individually and not use spots in the bulkhead for that because we have fan triggers coming out of the ECU, which is already in the engine bay right there. And I believe earlier in this video, I mentioned that these wires are convenient and you should always just like uh, coil them up in a loop and put them onto the dash because you never know when you want to use those circuits because for example, the coil and the fan are fused circuits. So you might need a fused circuit for something like auxiliary lights or a winch or whatever you want to use it for. So what we are going to do is we are going to take this choke power wire right here, this red wire, and we are going to turn that into the reverse light circuit. And that way we have a fuse circuit and all this thing has to do is run through the dash, down the uh, firewall to this switch, and then out of that switch, through the hole in the floor, all the way back to the reverse lights. That is a key on power that stays on while the engine is running. And therefore, anytime you put that shifter in reverse, those lights will go on. So. Let's wire all this stuff up, then we're gonna test all the lights, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, guys, so we got our reverse lights all set up. We have our starter switch all good through the, the park switch lockout, that is. Um, now it's time to test everything. So we got our positive terminal on, our negative terminal on, so the system is live. So let's see what we got here. So key on, not that it matters. We'll start with the flashers. Hazards, so that obviously covers both blinkers also, and they are both working. Now, one thing that's interesting about this system is that it was clearly set up or, you know, developed for a single red light and not to have an amber light, which is why it, it clicks on the brake light and the blinker, which I can live with. Uh, that only happens in the hazard situation. If you put on the blinkers themselves, it doesn't happen. However, um, since I don't have front lights on this, the blinkers don't really work. They only blink like once and then it kind of runs out of energy. So the next thing we'll do is the parking lights. So on one click. And there's a lot of light back here, but they are on. So we got them. Now, last but not least, let's check reverse lights. So. We'll shut those off and we'll come back into reverse here. So that's reverse. And we have reverse lights on. So the last thing that we did today that we can check is to make sure that it doesn't start in neutral or anywhere else and it does start in park. So we just so happen to be in reverse right now because I just put it in. So no start. So that's good. We go into park. fires right up all right guys so that's going to be about it for today we are most of the way through wiring Jordy the 40 and I think I've showed you guys enough that you could probably get through any wiring harness that's why I wanted to do this video is to just show people that you know if you take it one step at a time it's not that difficult it's relatively easy I'm not a rocket scientist and I can get through it so that means you probably can too um, I do want you guys to start thinking about what you want me to do next. So it's going to be a few more videos on the Land Cruiser, but we're coming down to it on this thing. So obviously we have to work on the Altima a little bit. And I do have a couple of like, will it start like single or double episode uh, videos coming up. But uh, the next big project, we can either go back to my RX-7 and we can kind of wrap that thing up once and for all. I have been buying parts for it all winter long. Or we can pull the M38 Willys Army Jeep in here and do that thing bottom to top, frame off restoration. Um, that also needs to happen too. So it's up to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you want to do and uh, that's what we're going to do. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you're thinking and I will see you guys next time on Ran One Parked.